Jorge Bustamante. I am married to Andrew Bustamante. Um, we were both uh, CIA officers. Um, that's where we met. We met on orientation day, basically. So we met, I think, I, I noticed him after the first week. And he was always uh, seated between two females. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I wow. decided, yeah, I saw him from a distance. And I was like, I'm going to meet that guy. And so it took me about three weeks to get a seat next to him and start up a conversation. Um, and he was great. As soon as I introduced myself, he was like, do you want to go out on a date Wednesday? I was like, yes, yes, I would. Wow. Thank you very much. Yeah, he was great. So um, the bummer for him was I was dealing with um, an anxiety disorder at the time that had just kind of, I'd had it for about six months undiagnosed. Um, so I was having all this anxiety constantly and it was making me really physically ill. And um, so he asked me out on the date. The night of the date, he called me to ask directions to my house. And I was like, I was throwing up. <laughs> I was like, I was oh, like, I can't no. go. He's like, are you sh like, do you want coffee instead? Do you want, he kept trying, trying, you know, and I'm like, I just can't. And that was the very end of our orientation. I was like, I can never see this guy again. Like he makes me throw up. I have too much anxiety. I like him too much. I was like, I, this sucks. Like I'm never going to see him again. So then we spent like, I think a, a month working on the same floor in our offices, completely avoiding each other until I bumped into him at a staff meeting. And then I was like, it how was, old were you? I was 27. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was intense. And I was, it, he was a very patient man because we had a lot of tea dates. <laughs> when mm. I was like, I'm really nauseous right now. <laughs> like you make me so nervous. <laughs> now, now this, like it, it, it parlayed into you guys eventually working together like right as a team yes and that was that like before you guys got like into a relationship relationship or was it the relationship first and then you guys teamed up together so it was the relationship first and um you know part of what brings us together um are our commonalities so we both have an interest and a background in asia and that's the region that we were working. So we were in different offices, but the same region. And so we both had, um, so I was, uh, I lived in Japan from the ages of two to six. And I spoke Japanese when we lived there. And then we moved back to the States after that. So I had this, you know, my like, pi my like pivotal, my growing years were in Japan. So I had this, really? yeah. So I had this really strong What were you doing connection. in Japan? My parents... My, pa my dad's Venezuelan, okay. so my mom met my dad in Fort Lauderdale, moved with him to Venezuela. I was born there, and they'd converted to Buddhism, a Buddhism that the sect is um, it's the Nichiren, uh, Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism in, in, from Japan. So they had friends who had already gone to, like, explore this Buddhism more in Japan, and my parents were trying to figure out how to get there. My dad found a school that did, um, had a master's in architectural photography. So he enrolled in the school. He like learned Japanese, enrolled in architectural photography school, and they just took us. Well, I was just me at the time. So yeah, my, my mom, I'm two, and my mom goes halfway across the world. And they, they like adventure. That's my super parents. cool. Yeah. And you learned <laughs> English and Japanese. I mean, you were obviously old enough yes. to already know English, but you learned Japanese at a very young age. Yeah. So Japanese, Spanish, and English were my first three languages, which was interesting when I moved back because I moved to St. Petersburg and um, I, my second grade teacher <laughs> tried to hold me, no, my first grade, my first grade teacher tried to hold me back because she said that knowing so many languages made me slow, <laughs> which... You know, that's it was 1986. That's okay. Um, but my mom pushed back, and I ended up in gifted class instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Teach their own. Exactly. <laughs> but ever since then, I was, you know, when we got to the agency, you know, I, I, want, I had Spanish. I was like, I can pick Japanese right back up. I had enough of it, and that was my interest. And then Andy has Chinese, and his, um, he has a degree in uh, East Asian Studies. And so we had this common interest in that region and in working the targets in that region. So it was natural for us to eventually end up working the same targets. I don't think we were ever at the same time in the same office, but that doesn't mean that we 
weren't working the same targets, if that makes sense. Like, um, for example, they'll have a regional office that will do Asia, but then they'll have another office that does a subject matter like counter proliferation, mm -hmm. right? So you can be, have two people, one in a regional office, one in counter proliferation, and then they overlap because counter proliferation happens everywhere in the world. So that's how it ended up happening. And where are you guys at at this point? Like, where is the CIA headquarters? Like that you guys, where's the building that you guys are working at? So we were in Langley at the main okay, okay. headquarters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we were there for quite some time before, you know, doing TDYs and things like that. So. And how long was it before you guys actually went out into the field and went to Asia together? So we. And where did you guys go to China? Uh, we, I. I you don't can't think, say? Yeah, we can't say the exact location. Oh, Asia. Okay. <laughs> Asia, okay. Yeah. Um, but we did a number of TDYs separately. Um, so we had started traveling for the agency almost as soon as we joined. Oh, okay. Right, like he, him going, you know, I would go one country, he would go another country d at different times as the office, as the mission dictated. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, eventually I, I knew that I wanted to be assigned overseas um, for a longer period of time. So I started, you know, just putting a little bug in my manager's ear, like I will go literally anywhere. Um, I was like, Ulaanbaatar, I don't care. Like just send me overseas. Um, I wanted the excitement of being in the field because it's the work is different, right? Like headquarters work is slower field work. Like you are on the ground real time, like stuff happens, you know, like, um, where we were, there was a, like a small terrorist attack while we were assigned there, you know, and I'm like, it's action, like stuff is happening real time. Like I'm working with the foreign service there. Um, you know, it's just incredible. So we, I think we were together, I think we were together three years, um, before we were sent out for a long assignment. And that was, it was amazing. Do you think because because of your guys opposite personality traits do you think mm -hmm. that made you guys work better together yeah because a lot of people there's a lot of uh a lot of different opinions out there of people who think that the same personality types are better together versus opposite personality types i'm yeah. on the, on i personally believe that opposite personalities fit together better because like you and andy my wife and i are completely opposite, opposite. Yeah, so um, I think professionally being opposites on the same team, on the same operation was awesome mm. Like because we totally filled in each other's, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Um, personally, that makes it a lot harder, I think. I look at some couples that are almost identical in personality and they just seem to gel and, like, everything's always smooth. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I have that? Um so yeah, professionally, I absolutely think, you know, you have to have people with different characteristics, different strengths, weaknesses, traits. Um, and that really worked out for us at the agency. Um, but at home, it's definitely much more of a struggle um, trying to keep balance. Um, and I don't know if it's just because at home is like 24 seven where, you know, in an op, you get together, you play in the op, everybody does their part, you know, but at home, it's a little bit messier. Yeah. So.